I will continue to go into women's restrooms, women's locker rooms, women's spaces, because I am a woman, whether you like it or not. I want you to love yourself. I am ready to retire very early. It's really too much, right? Too much for any person. Do you want to know the trans version of the Roman Empire? It's the fact that we are in stage seven of genocide in America for trans people. I hate her. So one of two things may happen here. Considering I experience these people in real life now, in that warehouse, that mob hit bust warehouse, with Pennywise and Bigfoot, that fever dream. You know, considering I experienced in real life, I was thinking I may either be so actually traumatized by having to watch these people again, be back at it with the woke TikToks, or I may be way more able to handle it than ever. So let me know what you think at the end, how I handle it. Rate me, put a, put a, put a little score in the comments. Oh, I go where I please. I will continue to go into women's restrooms, women's locker rooms, women's spaces, because I am a woman, whether you like it or not. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing Fox News can do about it. Ollie London, uh, Ben Shapiro, uh, Stephen Hilton, uh, Tim Poole. So here's the thing. First of all, we need to start talking about how, since y'all want to force this word passing on me, let's talk about it, babe. Since y'all want to imagine all the times Blair's went on about passing, even though I actively avoid the word, we're going to use it now. We're going to have some real talk now. So because you pulled it out of me, let's stick our heads up, sit up straight, and listen in a way that is very adult-like. Right? Passing is a lot more than looks. In fact, looks are often at the bottom of the totem pole. You know how y'all talk about how I just bash everyone's looks in regards to passing? When, if you really know the situation about passing, looks actually fall very low on that list. It's about energy. It's about aggression level. It's about that spirit. And when you have this male aggression in you to, as he's talking, put his, he's, he's lunging at the camera. Did y'all see that? He's like, I go where I please and no one can stop me. Ollie London, Ben Shapiro. It's like, you're coming at, first of all, a bunch, a list of men, like a man, while also saying, I'm a woman. I'll go wherever I want, Ben Shapiro. I'll go in the bathroom. Huh. I mean, if that's the demeanor you walk in that bathroom with, I, it's not a far off imagination in my head of why women are reacting with a, at least a side eye, right? At least a little, whoo. Because I would. Like, that's the other, that's the other conversation. Like, if you're really like a trans woman and you got that, I'm very aggressive on camera. I'm very like, bored up. but in real life, it's like, I do have a very sort of like, I'm to myself, not submissive, but very like light, you know what I mean? And I'm not like, I'm going in this room, <laughs> you know what I mean? But so that even if I came across this person trying to bust up in the room, I'd be like, oh, my, my, my safety is very much in jeopardy. But really, it is so much more than looks. And that's why it's also a double stupid thing when people talk about how I'm going on about passing despite never using the word. Because even if I were, how I really, really feel about passing is that looks is low on the bottom totem pole of, of what matters and what builds into that. Example, on the Jubilee debate, um, Jessica, who is one of the trans conservatives, you know, she talks about how she has self-awareness and she feels like she doesn't necessarily pass, but that she doesn't go to the women's restroom out of respect for them. First of all, that's amazing self-awareness and that's also very commendable. People who put other people before them, that's just a good person in general, right? And the comments are full of people, of women. No, not of people, of women. The comments are full of women. In fact, I saw a few top comments that were like, Jessica, you can come in the women's bathroom anytime you want because you clearly are a good person and you respect women. So that's that fact that it's about energy, right? The looks matter too. We're not disregarding it. And it's assessing a threat, which is what women actually do all of the time. Women are actually, this is one of the things that I have learned. 
I'm not learning any of the, you know, biological stuff in terms of periods or pregnancy or, you know, so many other things that only biological women will go through. But one of the things that I learned about being perceived as a woman in the world, once I started walking these streets and people saw in their head a woman, I realized how every day women are doing some level of threat analysis on the, on the men around them and no one is immune to it. If when women walk into rooms with men, they are aware of what men are in the room, you know, on a vibe level. And they, it, they assess who's a threat, who's not, who is looking at me with sexual eyes, who's looking at me with a different type of eyes. It's just what they do. I definitely started doing it the moment the world started perceiving me as a woman because it is palpable, that moment. Like I felt it, I knew it, I was like, oh, this is the shift. This is the shift now I'm actually being treated like a woman by society and with it comes a certain vulnerability. Is it the same level of vulnerability of women my exact, you know, size, height, weight, but without these man hands <laughs> to defend themselves a little bit better? No, it's not the same level of threat. However, it's definitely a threat. I'm 5'5", 125 pounds. Like men are a threat to me. And I have to be, I have to make assessments based on who is a threat and how big of a threat every room I go in when it comes to men. Who's trying to fuck me? Who's trying to, you know, is disgusted by me? Who likes me? Who's, who wants something else? It's like a thing. You got to remember women have men that come up to them, strangers, to hit on them. And I'm not putting down men who, also that other side of the coin, have that courage to approach women because I actually find that very honorable that you are willing to take it old school like that and approach someone in person and I think that any woman with her salt is always going to respond with respect if you come at her with respect in that scenario right that's not what I'm talking about when it's a mutual like this is a respectable moment between a male and a female and it's a courting thing it's like a it's a mating thing it's like animalistic what I am talking about is how women have creepy men who don't come up to them with good intentions all of the time regardless of how attractive they are. So that builds a level of distrust of men in any space. So they are doing these assessments of threat levels. And for you, sir, your threat level's 10. It's 10. Right? So since, again, Blair only cares about passing, a word she doesn't use, but we're going to say it anyways, we'll start with the looks then. Yeah, you look 100% like a man. Not even 99, right? Like that's just... Every characteristic on screen is man, but to double that and add to it with that energy is the other part that's way bigger, actually. Because many women, even if they see you making a decent effort, even if they clock that you're trans, but they see you that you're clearly making an effort and clearly have an energy that goes with the look you're trying to have at least and not walking into bathrooms like this Ben Shapiro, then that's a different story. You're a threat. I see you as a threat, and I have balls. This is a special PSA for anyone who's raising a white daughter. Please stop gassing your white daughters up to be mothers. Stop telling them that it is their destiny and their birthright to one day be a mother, and they will one day be a parent. If they want to, cool, but stop making them feel like that's their birthright because they often grow up feeling entitled to children. Okay. You know, I've never in my spare time looked up the definition of birthright, <laughs> but I would assume it has a little something to do with something that you were able to do specifically because of the way that you were born, right? So as a woman, I would say that giving birth, the thing that only women can do, it's birthright. God bless all the women struggle with, struggling with infertility. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, that's like the definition of a birthright. I actually can't imagine more of a birthright. Especially coming from the people who say things like trans women and women's sports, participating in sports is a birthright. Nuts. Also, for you to be so sick to reduce that to just white people, as if you're not just casually throwing out there which you know race you want to breed less, Oh yeah, but don't worry, black people can't be racist. Despite 
making a video about another race telling them to stop breeding and to stop telling their children to breed. <laughs> I mean, you are racist as shit, right? I mean, wow. I thought Blossom was bad. I genuinely think not even that race-obsessed Blossom would say this. And the background noise of all of this that makes it so much more demented is this is a teacher in a classroom teaching kids. I mean, I can't. Do you want to know the trans version of the Roman Empire? It's the fact that we are in stage seven of genocide in America for trans people. I hate her. Where that's a strong word. Okay, let me break it down. Why? So, this is another one of those examples of the trans activist who is supposedly pushing us in the right direction while gaslighting, terrifying, and lying to a group of people that is lied to that we are murdered at disproportionate rates that is factually incorrect, to people that are already suffering from mental health issues of various forms. And you have them in a constant state of fear. You and the media who runs with this and so easily throws out the word genocide. How dare you use that, first of all, for people who have actually been victims of that, right? There are still people alive today that survived the Holocaust and other forms of genocide or, that have happened. So that's pretty disgusting, right? You're pretty nasty for that. Wild for you to throw that out so easily. All in the pursuit of fear-mongering fear a group of people that already suffer from mental health issues. So actually, you're a crazy abuser. You're a crazy abuser. A psychopath who is downplaying genocide to terrorize a group of people struggling with mental health issues. I mean, if anyone could break down what I'm doing and describe it in such horrific words, I mean, you're the devil. That is straight demonic, demon shit, right? I've, I hope I'm not being too dramatic with that. I mean, I'm very into just like deeply looking at what, what all these people are doing lately because it can be broken down like that. It can. One plus one equals two. You are a bad person for waking up, rubbing the crust out of your eyes, putting that phone in your face and saying, that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to lie and terrify this group of people that I am also lying that I am supporting and trying to help and push forward by making us feel like there is an expiration date on our lives. Because who is going to want to live a prosperous life where they are going after their dreams, trying to meet their goals, trying to live a healthy, productive life when they think they're on stage seven of a genocide? Because Little Miss Trans Appropriator said so. Not because there are actually numbers backing that up, right? And they just, they just know exactly when to invoke that fear-mongering and use Jewish people. Whenever they want to use that word Hitler to describe the most benign <laughs> Republican they encounter, they will use that, they will use that Nazi word, right? Because let's not forget, George Bush was a Nazi, Mitt Romney was a Nazi, who is now a cucked out dem. You know, John McCain was a Nazi. And then they want us to believe that Trump was actually the Nazi. Was he was actually Hitler? We, 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 we were we were kind of joking every other time. This one is okay. So that's the psychopath who cried Hitler. Next, hundreds of humans who identify as dogs gather at a Berlin train station to advocate for the rights of people who identify as dogs. The event was organized by a group called Canine Beings. You know, it's moments like these that I am ready to retire very early. It's really too much, right? It's too much for any person to observe, to witness. You know, that sidewalk still has that smell. You know that despite this video perhaps even being recorded a year ago, who knows, that stench is still there. It didn't leave. I mean, they identify as dogs. 
So even setting aside the, there's no way they don't smell just on a basic hygiene, basic self-love level, you know, they're nasty, stinky bitches, but because they identify as dogs, you know, they're just dropping a deuce wherever they want, like a dog does, right? I'm done. I got misgendered at work on Wednesday um, by someone that has been corrected before and it just hit me hard. I was three hours into my um, long shift. I don't even remember how long it was, maybe eight hours, my eight hour shift. Um, and I immediately was like, no, I need to leave. So I left, I went home. Um, and since then I have been spiraling, which is not a fun thing to be dealing with when you are a broke person living in New York City and need to pay rent. So I'm getting ready to go to work right now, go to my other job. Um, I called out last night and I'm having to talk myself into showing up today. How broke can you be if you just have this choice to wake up every day, whether or not you want to roll up to work? It's just your choice, huh? I left work out of nowhere because someone said a word I didn't like. And then the next day I called in and then today I'm really deciding like, should I go to work or not? You can't be that broke. And notice how, <laughs> first of all, when she said, so I got misgendered at work today. And ever since then, I have been spiraling. Spiraling. She rewinded if you need to. She smiled. Spiraling. Again, because I'm psychoanalyzing these people from now on, that's the real her. She's smiling about it because she could not be more lit emotionally in a positive direction that she had something happen that she is able to hop up on TikTok and make a video about, first of all, get that content, that clout, and then also have people feel bad for her and cry for her and tell her she's such a strong warrior for going to work, you know, looking the way she does. And there is no one on the planet who would look at you and say anything other than she. Blaze talking about not passing again. Not a word I used. I'm just talking about reality. If I looked like Joe Jonas, despite being just as internally trans as I am, right? That gender dysphoria, that condition, whatever. Take everything inside my brain, heart, and mind. Put it in Joe Jonas's body. In what world would I have a even remotely rational reason to expect anyone to call me anything but he. That's that realism that y'all need to learn about. That's not me judging who passes and who doesn't. That's that's just a black and white situation, right? No nuance, right? You have a woman in a camera literally engaging in like a, a feminine thing. She's like looking in the mirror telling the video. She's like, so I got misgendered at work today. And, you know, I'm spiraling. spiraling. You're smiling when you're saying spiraling because you're very excited about it and you are literally so delusional that you think anyone's calling you anything other than she as you're primping your hair telling them a story about how someone said something that hurt your feelings on some true woman behavior shit right and that's how you know she's not really trans by the way that she would even walk out of work in a panic over getting misgendered even if she was really trans and then talk about it on the internet because when you're really trans, one thing I will say, I, I want to give, I want to give those those true trans, those transsexuals, those those people who are really suffering with gender dysphoria and really out here doing their big one every day, going to work, work you know, trying to just figure it out, right? I will say about y'all, y'all are resili resilient as hell. You have that inner strength that inner peace to put up with the BS that you do put up with. I'm not someone who walks through life and gets misgendered. Y'all think you're doing your big one on Twitter saying he for Blair White. Let me know when someone ever does that in real life, right? So I don't necessarily experience that pain that real a real transsexual who's really trying is still gonna get called he would feel. But I know for damn sure, for her to still be around kicking, she's not breaking down because of it, not going to work because of it, not refusing to wake up, put her pants on one leg at a time and walk this world like everyone else has a right to, right? Because they have that resilience because they've really been through shit and you're just a clout chaser, an appropriator, right? That's how you know more than anything else. This is not a trans person. Next. All right, y'all know what time it is. It's time for more non-binary linguistics. Cause let's be real, we in a different class than y'all and I'm still not doing math. 
All right, coming to class, don't be late. So to start today, we'll be talking about some gender neutral synonyms that you could add to your vocabulary. Instead of saying phrases like ladies and gentlemen or boys and girls, try saying phrases like distinguished guests or beautiful people. Hell, Halloween coming up. You can even say goblins and ghoulies and it would still be inclusive to all genders. All right, this one is for all my Spanish-speaking bilingual baddies out there. The Spanish language is traditionally a gendered language, like many, no shade. The gender-neutral conjugation in the Spanish language is ending words in an E. So with a word like nosotros or nosotras, you would end it in an E and say nosotres, and that would make it gender-neutral. Do you notice how I was smiling through most of this guy's video? It's because he's funny, and I want to like him. But what I don't like, is the there's something off right and what's off is that confidence that really isn't confidence because for you to actually be a confident person who's really up here with that full intensity and that humor you would have to love yourself and i'm not saying you don't love yourself in some ways but there's something you need to look deeper in yourself with why you can't just accept being what you are which is an effeminate gay man that's what you are. You're not non-binary. You're not under the trans umbrella. You know, there's a lot of shame that effeminate gay men feel over being that. And I think it can cause some of them to reach for other words. Call me anything but that. I'm non-binary. I'm a third gender. I'm a fourth gender. Because being an effeminate gay man is so stigmatized, even in the LGBT community, by the way. Know that. That's real. So it's a shield you're putting on to... Get in between those bullets of people that are going to judge you for being an effeminate gay man. But I love you for being an effeminate gay man. Because it's real. That's what's real. That non-binary shit is not. It's not real, babe. And it's blocking you from that full self-love. Because you have enough self-love to come up on camera. You're giving, you know, a look. I wouldn't do that look. But it's a look in your own head, which means that you put love into it, right? You are funny, you're willing to put yourself out there in a way that's widely viewed. So there's some level of self-love, but it doesn't quite extend to just accepting exactly what you are. Blair, you're being hypocritical. You didn't accept the fact that you're male. I'm male. I'm a man. I have no problem accepting that. I also have a medical condition that led me to do some other things to my body, but I am accepting that, like all of it. Don't try me. But you know, for him, it has to be anything other than just being a sassy gay man. And I love gay men like that. I know a lot of people, even people who are like kind of okay with gay people, they're kind of like, you know, why is he putting on that voice? Really? You think it's the humor aspect? Yeah. There's clearly something biological going on. People have gay face. You can see it. I see it. I can clock someone by actually just by a picture, by seeing their face. I can tell if they're on the scale of straight and gay. And I'm actually getting so good at it. I can actually clock if they're like more on the bi level. There's bi face. I swear to God, there is. I'm not crazy. And on a deeper level, I'm gonna give that shout out to the tranny chasers now. I know you're waiting for it. The tranny chasers are watching it, being like, "What about us?" I know. I can see you too. Just from a picture, I'm not kidding. I actually can tell a trans attracted man by a picture. There's something physiological. I can't put my finger on it. I'm still learning why, but it's there. Sexual orientation. I'm not one of these people that thinks that it's always 100% prenatal or biological, but it's clearly mostly, and you can see it. So not to get off on a tangent here, the point is, you know, shout out to the gays because I actually do love the gays when they're real and rational and don't support things that don't make sense simply for the sake of fitting in. Because in my head, when I think of like what makes LGBT people cool, real ones, are the fact that they are hyper-individualistic. They're living their own fucking life, doing their own fucking thing, and they don't give a fuck. What you think? It's these ones that really give a fuck that have to turn being a funny, sassy, effeminate gay man into this preachy shit about being trans and non-binary and use these pronouns. Now you're getting into that weirdo preachy shit. When you could have just been funny. I had a smile on my face for half the video and then you started talking that psycho babble and I said, okay, I would frown, but I have too much Botox. Um, the point is, get it together because you can do better and I'm not trying to be mean. I want you to love yourself and I want you to view you in the way that I view you, which is as a vibrant person who lit up the screen and made me smile, but then that 
would be frowned if I didn't have so much Botox came out over that psychobabble commie shit. No. Stop the psychobabble commie shit. Listen, that is it for this edition of The Glow White Project. I am going to go rest because I'm all stressed out. You saw me rubbing my shoulder the whole time. I'm getting knots. I'm not kidding. In fact, you might be able to hear it. That's us not from stress. I'm not kidding. Y'all are killing me. Bye, guys.